welcome to Markets of Sunshine, the place where we keep creating in the sunshine. Coming to you from sunny Florida. Hi, I'm Marcia. I hope you're having a great day and we're ready to be creative with me today. So I have been working on using up my stash, which a lot of us are, and getting rid of what little bits and pieces that we have on our desk. So as you can see, I've collected together all these little scraps that I've been using in my crafting lately, and I wanted to um, show you what I have and what we're going to do today. So I'm going to incorporate card making into using it on a junk journal or in a junk journal or to send it as a card. <laughs> How about that? Um, so, you know, how often do we send cards to people? How often do you receive a card? So, even though we would love to receive cards, and we have to sign up for either, you know, a swap group, or a random act of kindness, and because, sad to say, our really, our little circle of friends, how many of them really do that? So you, get, you incorporate a new circle of friends that love to do that and the like-minded with the card and crafting. And we have diversity, so it doesn't, it's okay that our close friends and family maybe don't do that with us, but it doesn't stop us from doing it for them. So let's make cards, and that's what I want to focus on for the rest of this year. 2021 is going to be a focus of making cards and gifts and journals and you can send them to friends, you can sell them, you can donate them, you can give them away, whatever it is you want to do with them. But let's just be creative and have a focus for the rest of this year. So my crafting collaborator friend, Linda Coker, her and I um, co-partner um, in our uh, her Facebook group, um, Junk Journal Junction. So now I help her in that. So we are also partnering with our YouTube channel and we help each other just, you know, promote and support each other and have fun. That's very important in business to have a creative partner because they get you. <laughs> Nobody else gets you except somebody else who's doing what you're doing. And so she had a focus on her YouTube channel and I encouraged her to get her YouTube channel going and to share with the world what she knows because we all have our own individual skills and our own individual gifts and even though we may all be in the same field of crafting and sewing and quilting and journal making and card making and scrapbooking and mixed media or painting whatever it is but everybody does it differently you know you can commission five people to make you a quilt. You can commission five people to make you a junk journal. You can commission five people to paint you a drawing or a picture. You can commission five people to make you a scrapbook album. And they're all going to come back and be different. That's what's beautiful about who we are and what we do. So I hope you will embrace what I do here on my channel. I hope you will connect with me. I hope you resonate with me. And you learn something from me and my technique, my style. And I am trying to figure out what do I gravitate toward. And the other day we were in a group together on Zoom with some of our friends that we do our ministry with. And we actually were hanging out after our uh, Sunday meeting and um, getting ready for our letter writing that we do and um, inviting people to this wonderful uh, memorial celebration of Jesus Christ's death coming up on March 27th. Um, so he r recognized that he started looking at what colors are his ties? <laughs> what color are his shirts? And then he started seeing a common denominator, a, a, a regular central theme and he might have a little bit of one color and he might have a little bit of another color, but there was a dominant color. And then he realized, hey, that's my color. I really do love that color. And I said, you know, let's take a step back. 
let's look at what we have in our craft room. Let's look at what are the supplies that we gravitate toward when we go to purchase something. Do you find yourself purchasing a certain type of an item over and over and over? Or a certain color over and over and over? So if you do, that's your theme. That's your color. That's your basis for doing things. Yes, we like to mix it up and do different things. But what I have found to help settle this um, uncertainty of what you want to do, what am I going to do today? What am I going to go in my craft room and do today? Let's put some, some focus and a set a goal. So my personal goal, and I'm, I'm challenging you to set the same goal for yourself. Set a goal for the year. Break that goal down into the rest of the months. We have nine more months of this year, 2021. I mean, three months of all, or, you know, two and a half months are already, you know, gone. And make a goal of what you want to do with your crafting for the rest of the year. And then break that goal down into the, the, the nine months. Break that goal down into the four weeks break that goal down into weeklies, and then break that goal down into dailies. That's how you can achieve your goal, have a really good focus, be more creative. It will actually help you to be more creative. And when you have a set goal now, you know exactly what you want to do. And as you're going along, you can tweak it and change it. That's perfectly fine. They're, they're your goals. You can adjust them however you want to adjust them. So I started looking at what do I gravitate toward and really taking a look. And I've had people come to my home and my family members and they say, oh, you like vintage and you like country and you like flowers <laughs> and, you know, you like peach and green. And, you know, so those things dominate in my life and in my house and in my decor and in my clothing and in all the things that I do with the crafting. And if you look at what I have here on the table today, it shows you right away that that is true. So here's a little mug rug that I made years ago. And this fabric that I happened to have in my stash, which was a vintage fabric, and it was um, like, I don't even remember, a shirt or a skirt or something like that that I had and uh, was given to me. And then I, you know, cut it to say, but I just love this. It's so textured. Look at that. It's so beautiful but it has flowers. And then of course I had these vintage bumblebees in a, a stash that I had found, I don't know, garage sale, wherever it was, I don't even remember now. And then of course these buttons that I found in my stash that I wanted to you know, bring out those colors. And then on the back I just have felt and then I put the vintage lace around it, sewed it, and that was the cute little mug rug. Isn't that adorable? It's so quick and simple and easy to do. And then this one here, even though it's different and completely in what I used, but you'll still see there's flowers, buttons, the yo-yos, this vintage little spool thread, and then flip it over and I used that fabric for the back. So you see, I just reversed what I did on the other one, but I still have flowers. You see that? You, see, you start to see my pattern of that continuity is coming in there now. So I recognized right away, and of course, butterflies. So butterflies and flowers are the two dominant things that you will find in my decor. Now, in my clothing, you will not find lots of butterflies or um, flowers. The only thing that I have flowers on are nature, which I, I seem to, when I'm shopping, I'll gravitate toward that. So I shop online at Kohl's. I don't like going into department stores. I get I get sick in department stores. <laughs> you ever watch that movie Romancing the Stone and she's on the escalator with the lady in the department store and she's not feeling good and then the other lady says something to her and then she's like, oh, lots of people get sick in department stores, you know. And so I, was, I laughed at the time because I was like, you know, it didn't really bother me then, but it does now. So I shop on, online and... Um, I, I love it, but all of my clothing and th things like that are have flowers. 
So I realized that's where I like the flowers. The butterflies, I really don't find clothing that I like that has butterflies. You don't really find a lot of stuff with butterflies. You have to go to specialty people like that uh, Quacker factory that's on Home Shopping Network. And um, I don't even think I bought anything with butterflies on it from her. So I don't know. But anyway, so, um, but just look through your stash and pick out, you know, find out what is your theme, what do you like, and go with it. Because if you will stick with a theme that you love, then you'll start to notice that your creativity and the things that you make are going to become more and more beautiful, more and more creative. People are really going to go, oh, that's so beautiful. You did such a good job. You know, and maybe it's not even their theme, <laughs> but they're going to love it and they're going to like it. But then they can commission you to make them something in their theme because they see what you did such a beautiful job. So what I want to teach you today is how to come up with your own theme and let's get a certain technique and a style that is your signature style, your signature technique. Okay, so I went on, and this is where I'm going to give you some information. This is a little bit of homework for you. I want you to go on Pinterest, and this is what I use Pinterest for. <clears throat> Other than, I mean, I, I post my Etsy products to Pinterest. That's really what I only use it for. I don't spend time scouring Pinterest for any recipes because I can't cook any recipes outside of what I can eat. And um, I don't scour it for home decor ideas, but I know there's lots of you do that do that. And my daughter, who's 30 years old, that age group seemed to just absolutely love it. So the young folk seem to love Pinterest and they sit there and the people who have a pretty good amount of help and can eat anything they want to eat. They can make anything they want. They spend their time on there, which is beautiful. And if you want decor ideas, you know, just to get yourself some ideas. I knew when I was redecorating my home, I wanted it to be farmhouse theme because I'd watched enough of Joanna Gaines <laughs> on her um, show. And I said, you know, I like, I do. I like that, you know. So when I was young, I thought I was a city girl, but when I grew older, I realized I'm a country girl. So we lived in the country for a few years, and I hated it <laughs> because of the bugs. I loved the nature. I loved the peace and the quiet and the solitude, but the bugs were horrendous here in Florida, so I hated it because of that. But um, anywho, so that's the only time I ever went on Pinterest, and I said, okay, I like the farmhouse. Let me see what I have. But then, because I shop at Kohl's, I went on Kohl's and I typed in farmhouse decor and whatever came up that I liked, that's what I picked. And so that's what I have in my foyer. And if you go back and watch my YouTube videos, I believe it's either on this channel here, Markets of Sunshine, or on my Sunshine Homemaker channel. You'll see my whole um, entryway makeover. And boy, what a makeover that was because I had home interior gifts um, big, huge picture. It was a magnolia flower. Is that a surprise? No, it isn't. <laughs> Flowers, like I said. But now, in my foyer, you will be very, very surprised. There's no flowers. Not a single flower is in that foyer. It's really interesting, but I love it. And my friends, when they came over, I had not updated this house in decor for over, oh, wow. Let's see, we've been in the house for 30 years, and um, 28 years, I had not decorated and redecorated the house. Everything was the same, country, the same wall, pictures from home interiors when I sold it, and that was that was the way I left it. But I was try I was like, you know what? This kind of looks like old ladyish. It really did. It's like I'm not. I, why? How did I? Why did I even pick that picture? way back then, but it seemed, it seemed young for me then, but now it seemed too old, so I got rid of that, and everything that was in there, I mean, that, that everything went out, out, just gone, get, get, you know, skadoodle, and um, some of the things I just moved around in the house and repurposed, and other things, it was just like completely, let's just get rid of that thing, and right outside my window here, you can see my YouTube video 
on Sunshine Homemaker channel, which I will link that in the description. I keep forgetting to put that link in there. Um, but if you just type in Sunshine Homemaker, uh, then you will find my channel and you'll see my husband transforming this one uh, table. It was like, I don't know, like a console. It had a drawer in it. You know, it's up a little bit, kind of like behind of a sofa kind of a table and turned it into this beautiful planter box outside of my office window now. And we put tile over on the top and he painted the whole thing to seal it so that the rain and it's underneath the eave of the house. Perfectly good. It hasn't, you know, nothing, no damage, no deterioration or anything like that yet. And then inside the box where the drawer was, he, he cut a hole in the top of the box. So you can watch that whole process video. So um, give you some ideas on, on what to do. But um, anyway, so I this video today is going to be focused on helping us pick our style, our, our theme, and make a signature line for ourself so that when we're making things and we start to have continuity on our channel and we gravitate toward certain things which are the supplies we have on hand. So this is what I came up with for my signature style and it's going to be incorporated into every page in a journal, the fronts of the cards, the fronts of journals, um, whatever I'm making now, this is going to be my signature style. And, you know, feel free to use it as well. I mean, this is like, there, you know, there's no, uh, you know, coveting. <laughs> this is share, 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 give you ideas. So it's going to have layers. So there'll be a base layer, and I'm going to make this whole thing with you, so I'm not going to just talk about it. We're going to actually put one together, and then we're going to, I'll ha show you the transformation of here it is on paper, and then what does it translate into when you actually put this together now and make something with it. And then there's three layers. So here's a layer, here's a layer, and here's a layer. And then you see my little line I've got drawn here. This is a layer here. Okay. So, and then there's stitching around here. So you do have to stitch it on your machine. Or if you don't have a sewing machine, then use your little marker and do the, the fake stitch marks. And then we have vintage buttons. We have some embellishments. Here's a focal point embellishment. Here's a little tag. So from card to card and journal to journal, obviously the focal embellishments will change. But what I want to keep with the continuity is there will be flowers, there will be buttons, there will be ribbon. It will all be hand stitched. It will have inking and the tag and things like that, that, that may change, you know, from one to one. But I may, if I want to just keep that as my signature, so when you see, oh, that right away, if there's a little tag in there, all this other stuff, you know that that's from Marsha Markets of Sunshine. This is where I'm heading with this, and that's what you can do to, to if you want to do a business with it, that's how you can make something and make a signature line that everybody will know, no matter what colors you use, They'll, under, they'll start to see that is her style, that is Marcus of Sunshine style, that is whoever's style. They'll, they'll recognize it right away. And so now um, in what I have underneath here, so let me show you now. Let's start to orchestrate this whole thing. So I picked out from my Prima collection, it was called the Golden Coast was the paper pack. And um, I purchased this off scrapbook.com, which is where... I go there to get stuff when she has a freebie that I like, <laughs> but I don't go there any other time. It's just when there's a freebie that I like, and then if I need some other little things. But I did go to Home Shopping Network, and in fact, today is Tuesday. It just reminded me. So today on Home Shopping Network, HSN, Anna Griffin, it's a craft um, day today. So all month long, it's National Craft Month. So every Tuesday is their craft day, and then Anna Griffin's on there different times. And so I just wanted to throw that out there. So I did buy pay, um, cardstock. I got her metallics, which is, are absolutely beautiful. And I got her um, nature pattern paper. Now the nature are just one-sided, but the back is really like a beautiful creamy. It's not that ugly white. And isn't this beautiful? And if you saw me make the butterfly embellishment with this the other day, where I punched it here and then the little flower, absolutely gorgeous so and my uh, butterfly tag embellishments that I made the other day and I told you how much they were 
So I'm going to add other little things to that. So for the price that I quoted, it will stay that price, but there's going to be more added to the kit instead of it just being that. So I'll have other little surprise goodies that will be really, really good. So it's going to make the value far exceed the price that I put on it. But because that's such time consuming to make those little boogers, that's why the price has to be what it is. But feel free to make your own. But if you want to make, you know, buy some of mine, and that's a great way to give me a tip. So if you ever want to tip me, just go to my Etsy shop, make a purchase for any of these cool ideas that I give you and, and all the inspiration that I share with you. So we're going to use these. So I thought this right here, I love this. So this is going to be cut out. This is going to go into the front of the cart. So I'm just going to start taking the layers of what I just shared with you. Bring this back up here. So we're going to have three layers, like I said. So now this one here is going to be this main focal point. Even though we'll still be putting some things on top of it, and we're going to have this little section here, so the whole thing. But I'm going to follow this pattern here that I really, really loved. So we're just going to cut it out right at this edge of the cream color. And this type of thing, I like to just do it by hand. I don't mess with getting out the big cutters because I don't have any little cutters. And because I don't like to, you know, already, I have so much going on on this table. I have to start, uh, this to my left here, you can't really see that much. But my little tool caddy, that has to stay. But there, I've got a basket with a bunch of embellishments, that has to go. <laughs> That's in my way. So once that gets out of the way, then I, because I do want to keep a cutting tool here on my table so I'm not jumping up and down all the time like a ping pong ball or a Mexican jumping bean. Okay, ooh, look at that. I cut that pretty good. All right, so now we'll save this. This right here is just beautiful. I want to fussy cut this out somehow and maybe try to incorporate the hot air balloon. So come around here, maybe just come down through here, come up here, go all around up there. I want to cut that out for a focal point for a future card because the back of it's just that uh, the, the ugly on the back. Okay. So that, I mean, it's okay, but you know, no, it's not anything good. Okay. And then this here, this would just be maybe I could probably fit my little tag punch in there. So let's do that because I do want to tag on this today. So let me see. Yep. Look at that. It just makes it. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to cut this off here. Okay. Save that beautiful piece with the shell. Now we're going to take the window. We're going to slide it over here, and we're going to just get, so we're just getting that little half of the window. Isn't that beautiful? Just gorgeous. And then now this can come on here, and then this can go into the trash. Even though, now that I'm using that little tiny butterflies and flowers, this actually could be saved. And then all of this little sections here, I can get the die cut shapes, and oh, I would love it with all that metallic. So we're going to save that piece. All right, so... This is my tag punch reflections uh, two and three sixteenth inch. I got that at Michael's. Okay, now the base. Where did I put my card bases? Here they are. Okay, so I have everything out on my table. So I have two sizes, and these came already pre cut in my crafter's companion card making kits that I get off of Home Shopping Network. And I had a subscription. It was coming every month. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good though because I really needed it. And so now I have enough supplies, a year's worth of card bases and envelopes that match. So I don't have to make those. And all the embellishments that I showed you before in the other video. So I will put the 400 subscriber video in the cards above, and then you can enter the by subscribing to my channel. And then once uh, all the rules are in that description and in the video, I mention it. 
and then at the um, end screen so if you watch me all the way to the end I'll put the playlist of all my embellishments or it could be the playlist of all my items for sale in my Etsy shop I think I'll do that so just so that you can see what I have and if there's anything that strikes your fancy then you could you know grab it and give me a tip that way so I'm looking at this one now okay so this I could turn this way but this just by itself is so big that it's going to swallow up this card and it won't give me where I could make that other the three layers like I want and then this one is too short so it is the same issue so now I have to look through the card bases that I have and see where it was that I had the larger card base and if I can't find it then I will have to make one but that's not a problem because I do have white card stock so let me get that out because I know I had a larger one the other day but I don't know where I put it so that's, that's what you hear me say a lot here I have it but don't ask me where it is right now alrighty then and I just don't have the energy to go looking for stuff anymore honest and truly so that will improve here because I'm getting ready to have a lot of medical stuff done and it's going to improve my health and my energy so but that doesn't start until next month so I may my videos may slow down a bit depending on my recovery time of all that stuff so some little minor surgeries but it will improve my health okay so now let's go this way so now we got this going this way and then once I get my layers on here see then I'll cut this down to where I want it to, what I need it to do because this, this this length is not going to stay this width is going to come off of it a little bit too all right so now we want to come in here so we want a pattern this piece here is going to be a pattern so I'm thinking I'm going to go with the rose this back piece here is going to be a solid so let's take a look at that so we have the focal we've got the tag this can come in here as the lower piece of that so that picks up this part here and then the back of this oops, that's another print so that's not going to work okay and then unfortunately none of these this this could have possibly worked but I'm thinking it may um, it's not wide enough so you see what I'm saying so this part here well it might work that could possibly let me let me give that a whirl let's give it a whirl you hear me say that a lot too here all right so we're going to cut this out here and actually I'm going to cut this all the way up to here because that's the only way it will make it where it will make it <laughs> So this is you seeing me put all of this idea together in real time, right? Right here, live in front of you. Okay, so I want this to come behind here. This is going to be here. Okay, I like that already. Ooh, it's pretty. Pretty! And then this is going to be cut out here. All right, so now we just need our solid behind all of that, you see. So this embellishment page can go, and I know, I'm pretty sure, there wasn't anything else in this pack that could pass for, ooh, that's a possibility, that is a possibility, even though I take, I hate to take that beautiful embellishment, but let me see, let me see, I like to try to stick to the same paper pack, so when you can stick to the same paper pack, um, I don't know. What do you think about this? Would that, how would that look? Let's see. No, see, there's no blue. That color blue is just, it, that just throws it all off. A cream might be okay. Let's see. I had this other paper here in my stash. 
that I thought about. Let's give it a try and see what it looks like behind it all. Oh, it's got enough pink in there. I think that's going to work. So I have this color. This I got off of Amazon. And I just went in and I looked up vintage. How about that? Uh, okay, so this was from Royal Co. That's where I purchased it from because I would never have remembered that. And then this were this. These were the pages, so they're double sided. Look at that. It's pretty. So this is a floral and a solid, and I love that that burned edge look. So this was just like an absolutely yes. That's what I wanted for my. So you have this side, you have this side. So go on Amazon, type in that name, and you will be able to see these same beautiful papers that I got. And I'm just keeping it in the little bag, eh, just to keep you know, any accidental who knows what's getting on it. All right, so now this is it. This is perfect. So this is going to come here. <clears throat> Okay, this is okay. Well, that's going to be behind it. So this is this comes over here. So this comes over here, and then now these I have to cut down. So this I'm thinking. Okay, so I have to cut one just the same size. So we need one just the same size. This is how I do it. And the reason why um, I'm higher up in the frame today is because I've got this big box of buttons underneath of me because I want to show you this big box of buttons. And I don't remember if this was from my uncle <clears throat> who used to have an antique store and he gave it to my mother to give to me or if it was my grandmother's and when she died then my aunt gave it to my mother to give to me. So it was either from my uncle's antique store or it was from my grandmother, one of the two. <clears throat> okay, and then this is going to go here, and then this is going to go here somewhere. Don't ask me where yet. Maybe down here. Okay, see? Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so now we can see when we're looking at this. <laughs> I thought I was going to cut that card down, but now that I'm looking, it looks like I really need to keep it um, this size because, I mean, this is absolutely perfect. I'm thinking I like, let me bring it over this way and pull this over here. Do I like that burnished or no, because this side doesn't have it and then it will allow me, it will give me the pink over here that I'm looking, trying to get. Okay, so there's your element. So it's the base, here's our background piece, and then here's our layers. So this actually worked out because of the way I'm doing this. So we have the base, one, two, three, four, four, and then our little tag is kind of like I would throw that in as an embellishment. So if you took this away, then you've got your one, two, three, and then this is considered your embellishment focal point. So that that's how that would work. So we're still sticking with the three like I was my goal was. All right, so let's take these aside. And now I'm going to get the cutter. All right, this is my stamping up cutter. And we're going to take it over here. Get the pencil. Just gonna make a little mark here and a little mark here. And that way we know where we want to give it a little trim, a little haircut. Okay. Bring that over. Yep. Bring the cutter down. Okay, what I do with this is I score it. This is this is the scoring blade, whatever you want to call it. This is the actual cutter. And with this, you got to go fast, because if you don't, it catches. All right, so this is a save over here. A little save stash 
pile. So now we bring our little card back. So let's look at it and see if I need to trim any more, which is, looks like, yes, I do. All right, top and bottom are good. I like that much, but the side, which this side's already kind of got a little bit of a wrinkle in it, and I didn't like that anyway. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to score it first, and then we're going to come and cut that little piece off. That's trash. You have to learn to identify your trash because <laughs> you don't want to keep it. Now, what we're going to do also is all of this white is going to be inked up. So now we're going to put our little cutting mat back where he belongs. I have a bookcase that my husband made me, and it's a uh, on rollers, and it's in front of my closet. So I have like that makes it like a secret compartment closet thing, my jiggy. That's what I like to call it anyway. All right, so here we go. So we know now that we just need to ink it up about a half an inch all the way around. And what I like to use, okay, so I was using this brushed corduroy a lot. So let's come in here, get our bag, and uh, this is just to protect the surface. So I usually mix antique linen with vintage photo, but today I'm going to mix antique linen with brushed corduroy, and let's see what we get. Put that down so that I can open the lid. <laughs> a little bit of that, and a little bit of that, and the first thing we're going to do is go all around these edges. Let's get the edges first. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're just going to rub it back and forth. And then we're going to color in that edge so that then it looks really, really good. want to expand my Distress Ink Oxide collection, but it's not top of my list of things I need to do. So I will just stick with these. And so unless somebody wants to send me one, I would like to have the denim one and the... Um, Something in the in the the vintage pinkish you know colors, so antiquey pink looking, not not anything neon, no bright neon stuff. So any kind of a vintage denim blue or green and the pink. Those are the three colors. I did get that firecracker one. I don't like it, but it was just something I thought I would like since I like green and orange which I wish I'd have gotten a green with it to be able to put the two together to see. But those are the three that I would like to add to my stash of supplies, inking supplies. All right, let's open this up. I don't need to any more of this, so let me close these up. This seems to not want to be filling in it in right here for some reason. I need to get this flat 
better to be able to do that. That looks a little better, but that's okay. You can have a little bit of the white still peeking through. Looks nice that way. All right, so now I think that's pretty good. And then I'm going to take, of course, ink all of the sides of this. I may have to put more ink on it, but let me just see. And this dauber's starting to get pretty worn as well. Very subtle. Gonna need more, but anyway. All the little crumbs of the sponge off. All right, so now let's come back in here. Our paper. Perfect, see, just beautiful now. So now it has that complete vintage look that we want. Okay, now my question is, obviously, what, what do you think it is going to be? Okay, so now these two have to be trimmed down so that you can see a little bit of that. <clears throat> All right, so requires the trimmer again. Which is just a few steps away, so it's no biggie. All right, now let's, oh. I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose these beautiful borders. Hum, 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 hum. Okay, so let's look at this and see now how much do we need to extract off the side. I would say just a little smidgen off of each. So we're going to just do a little tiny, tiny, tiny cut. All right, that's too much. So like, like right there. I don't even know if it's gonna cut it because I'm so close. Oh, it did it. Wonderful, look at that. Okay, so that was good enough so that I can come in here now with my scissors and trim it in a straight line. Cause that's what I was wanting. I don't, you know, I don't do very good with that kind of thing straight. So I didn't want it to come out not looking good. All right, so just a little smidgen over here on this side. Same thing. <clears throat> Let me bring it over just a wee bit more. I don't even think it's doing anything. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, now we're going to trim it over here because I can just barely see that line. Aha, see how my scissor went through it? Look at how tiny that was. Just a sliver, just like I said. All right, which way are the words going here? All right, so the words are actually going this way, but it doesn't matter. So if I turn it this way, that looks good like that. But if I do it this way, because I kind of like this, I don't know, does it matter which way that looks? Yeah, this looks better this way. Okay, perfect. Now we can take this and we can just leave it, use it as our guide. We come over here and we trim that off. You see how that works? Okay, I think I had, I don't remember which one I had where, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to just set that right there just in case I don't have to keep going quite as far. All right, now we're going to come in here. Oh. That one need look like that one need. How come that looks like, or does it need a little more on that? Hmm. Look at that. It's, somehow it didn't get. No. Yeah, it just. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just do it myself. Just needs a wee bit more here. This side looks like it could just take off a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty even. Okay, there, perfect, okay. So now I just wanna even it up so that what I have at the top and the bottom are close to the same. Okay, 
So that looks pretty good. Just needs to come down a wee smidgen. Like right about there. Okay, now this one comes over here. Okay, and then this one can come here. All right, but we're not done yet. So now we need the stitching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two to this back and then take this to the machine and run a stitch all the way around like this. So in order to do that, we're going to take our scotch glue stick and we're going to turn these two over. And I'm just going to glue here and glue here just so that I can hold those little guys in place. Okay. Now I know that we had about this much. I don't want to lay them down yet until I know exactly where they need to be. Okay, that looks pretty good there. That looks pretty good there. Okay, so this one first, and then this one comes over here. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take it to the machine, and I shall be right back. Okay, so here we are, and this is what I've done. So I actually stitched this to the card first, and then I stitched this one to that. So when you open it up, so now I'll come in here with a piece and cover that all up. You won't even, they'll never know, they'll never see it. Okay, and then this is going to go here, and this is going to go here. And all of the cards that I'm making in, on my channel now will be listed in my Etsy shop. So they will be available for you to purchase any of these that you see. So now what we're going to do, we need to add this piece of, what do you call this? Linen twine? Linen, linen ribbon? I don't even know. I forgot. Gross, this isn't gross gain, is it? No. I don't know. I forgot what it is. But anyway, this comes on linen towels that I purchase from Grove Collaborative, which is a green company, you know, organic lifestyle kind of a thing. And so uh, they wrap these around the towels, which I never, I didn't even know. And so I was so happy when I received those. So they're in my stash and I use them up, you know, cut them and use different pieces. Okay, so we need four buttons. So let me look at my prototype. Okay, so I'm going to have a flower. All right, so I'm going to put a big flower here, which is going to be from my stash. We'll look at that shortly. So now we need the four buttons. And the buttons are going to go across right about this section here where I have the... And I was thinking I might come in here with a solid piece before I glue this other piece down. Okay, so we have this. I really don't have, um, these were all the buttons I told you a minute ago that came from my uncle or my grandmother, one of the two. All right, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? It, 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 they need to be a certain size, you know what I'm saying? You don't want these to overwhelm your project, but you don't want them to be minuscule either, where they just kind of, now that size looks pretty good. All right, so let's see. Hmm, so many. Like, where do I start and what do I choose? That kind of goes with that color of that. And that kind of goes with that color. I'm not liking that one. Let's see if we can find another one to match that up. This one we need to replace it. It needs a replacement. Let me see. It's 
like this particular size. You need a particular size. <laughs> and it just seems like I can't see one that's that size. They're all, they look to be too big or too small. All right, let me dig and I'll be back. Okay, here's the final finished product. What do you think? I'm thinking I'm going to take my one of my grateful stamps and put it right across here, of course, make it smaller. So that will be the final cherry on top embellishment. So, but there you have it. That's the final finished. Ta-da! So let's go back over the elements that I told you in the beginning and what we put together here. So we had our card base, and we had our three layers. So one, two, three. We had our focal embellishment. We have our little tag. I inked up here, so we did our inking. I inked up around the tag. I have our vintage buttons. I used more embellishments here with the cheesecloth that I inked up. I have this ribbon here, and then I have my flower and button and the vintage focal point here. Now this I purchased from an Etsy seller. I'll go back through and find who she is and I'll link her in the description below. But we can also make these on um, here on the channel. I don't have any of these type of things to make this. The bigger flower, yes, but this is a little bit more tedious. So I said, you know what? I loved her prices were really, really good. So I'm going to link her and show her some love so that uh, you can go over and purchase some of those from her as well. I haven't shopped from her in years, so I don't even know if she's making those anymore or if she's even in business. If she is, I will link it. So that's it. So this is now my signature that I'm going to do. This is going to be the types of layering that I'm going to duplicate in all of my journals and card making projects from here going forward for the rest of the year. So I hope this inspired you. I hope you like it. And this can be turned into a junk journal very easily. Just put your papers inside of it. And this is your cover for your journal. It's a good size, big enough size. Let me give you those dimensions because I didn't uh, measure that in the beginning, which this was just an eight and a half by 11. I folded it in half, so five and a half and this is eight and a half so an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock folded it in half now that gives you your base for a card a big beautiful card or a journal either one happy mail isn't it beautiful didn't it turn out wonderful so i'm going to come in here the last thing i'm going to do is put my grateful um, stamp right here or even joy i don't know which one it'll be but it'll be one of the two thank you for being here with me today i hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and if you like this kind of content please subscribe to my channel and look forward to seeing you in the next video where we will be making uh, more beautiful journals and cards the rest of the year like i said that's going to be the focal point and i'm going to be expanding on this style and showing you different variations now with different embellishments and different colors and patterns and what have you. So thank you so much. Have a great day and keep creating in the sunshine. Bye-bye.